Welcome again to chapter 7. The final step of chapter 7 will cover the Calvin cycle and Z4 and CAM adaptations of the photosynthetic cycles in plants. To recap about the order of how a plant goes through the process or how a plant does photosynthesis, as we've already talked about, initially light is absorbed by some pigments in the thylakoid membrane and using the electron transport chain they generate ATP and NADPH. So the next step occurs when sugar is made in the stroma of the chloroplast. Remember that's where ATP and NADPH are floating around after they've been generated by the electron transport chain. And the Calvin cycle is the step where sugar is actually made. The light reactions make energy. The Calvin cycle makes the sugar. So first let's start by looking at the Calvin cycle. We've already looked at light reactions, how they generate ATP and NADPH. Keep in mind that carbon dioxide enters the system from outside the chloroplast. Usually it comes in through the stoma or stomata of the leaf and gets transported to the cells, to the chloroplast, where it engages in the Calvin cycle, which generates sugar and then recycles some of its constituents to continue the process. Initially, your carbon dioxide molecule from the air comes into the Calvin cycle and connects to RUBP, which is a sugar, with a phosphate on each end. This is a five carbon sugar. Adding your one carbon from CO2 makes it a six carbon. And then, once it becomes a six carbon sugar, it's split into two three carbon molecules, each with one phosphate group attached. Next, the Calvin cycle will use one of the ATPs that was generated from the electron transport chain, making ADP plus a phosphate group, which can go back to the electron transport chain and be made into ATP again. It also needs to use the electrons from the electron carrier, NAD. PH, remember P, photosynthesis, generating NAD plus to go back and be involved in the electron transport chain again, thus generating what they call the G3P sugar, and that's step number two. The G3P sugar is exactly the shape that the plant needs, so it can then exit the Calvin cycle and go on to be made into a glucose molecule, a sugar molecule. Now remember you had six carbons up here broken into two three carbon chains. So one of the three carbon sugars can go into glucose. The other one is used or continues in the Calvin cycle to be turned back into RUBP and then cycled through to accept another carbon dioxide. In a nutshell, that is the Calvin cycle, which happens in the stroma, which is the liquid inside the chloroplast. This has obviously broken it down to a very, very simple format, but these are the main steps that you need to know. Uh, much like in cellular respiration, the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, there are actually many more steps, uh, but because this is Bio 100, we're not going to be covering them. You've got one of your G3P sugars going on to make glucose. Another one here must also use ATP to generate that RUBP molecule, which continues the cycle. Moving on, we're going to talk about the C4 and CAM pathways. So when we looked at photosynthesis so far, we're looking at the major pathway. Most plants are C3 plants. That first carbon that cycles through the Calvin cycle is a three carbon chain. C4 plants are named C4 because they actually use a four carbon chain in that first step of the Calvin, Calvin cycle instead of a three carbon chain. And that's not the only difference. The other difference is that each step of photosynthesis for them occurs in different cells. They're basically separated so that the electron transport chain happens in one area and then the carbon dioxide comes in and is turned into a four carbon compound which is then transferred to another cell where the Calvin cycle actually occurs.
So those are the C4 plants. Those are desert adapted, adapted plants. And then we'll talk, or at least I'll show you a picture about the CAM process. And what's different about the CAM process, it's not that it separates the photosynthetic cycles into different areas of the cell. It separates them by time so that it doesn't have to have its stomata open. Uh, a CAM plant is designed to not have to have its stoma or stomata open during the day also because it exists in very hot dry climates and can't afford to lose the moisture. So what it does is it leaves its stoma or stomata open at night and absorbs the carbon dioxide, attaches it to another molecule and then stores it until it can be used when the sun comes back up and a special enzyme stores that carbon dioxide and transfers it to the Calvin cycle when the Calvin cycle is able to use ATP and NADPH generated during the day. So this is just a quick picture showing you some examples of a C4 pathway or sugarcane, that's another good example, of a grass um, where the carbon dioxide comes in and is generated into a four carbon compound but the actual Calvin cycle occurs in a secondary cell another step to just prevent dehydration of the plant. And then the CAM pathway that we briefly talked about, pineapples and other succulents, or pineapples not a succulent, but other plants that are succulents, uh, exhibit the CAM pathway where their stoma, stomata are open at night to absorb carbon dioxide. An enzyme incorporates it into a four carbon compound just like C4, so these each do not use that initial three carbon chain like we've talked about. But then once daylight occurs, that CO2 is transferred to the Calvin cycle and the plant can continue to generate its glucose. So here just remember that the C4 plants perform the Calvin cycle in two different cells. The CAM plants separate the Calvin cycle by time. So one more quick recap, the Calvin cycle needs ATP and NADPH from the electron transport chain. These compounds are found in the stroma, which is the liquid filling the chloroplast. It uses carbon dioxide, connects it to an RUBP molecule, and then breaks that into two three carbon molecules, each with a phosphate group, consuming one ATP and one NADPH, making a three carbon sugar, which is later used to make glucose, where the other three carbon sugar then uses one more ATP molecule to be turned back into the RUBP. Now again, to tell you what C4 and CAM are, C4 plants and CAM plants are each adapted to hot, dry environments, where the C4 plants split their Calvin cycle into two different cells to help prevent dehydration. Um, the initial carbon chain in a C4 plant is a four carbon molecule instead of a three. And then in the CAM plants, the process of photosynthesis is separated by time, not in two different cells. Basically, each of these adaptations allow the plant to perform photosynthesis while the stomata are closed.